Okay, so I'm going to show you how you can web scrape and create huge data sets very, very simply if the website works in a specific way. I'll run through the criteria to know if the website works like this, how you can then find the information, extract it, and then load it into something like Pandas so you have this huge data frame full of that data. So let's have a look at the site. So this is a pretty standard e-commerce site. It's pretty common. I'm in a specific category too, which is like I don't know, new lower price sales stuff. So if we scroll down to the bottom, you can see that we've got somewhere in the region of uh, 11,800 results. And when we hit show more, we get this page number comes up at the top. This is a pretty dead giveaway to me that I know something's going on here. So what we want to do is we want to go to inspect element, I'll move this to this side, and then zoom in a bit so we can see and I'm going to go to network. And from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reload the page or go to, I don't know, the next page is fine. Now, for me, this popped up straight away. I can see that this indicates that it's JSON data. Um, it will say JSON down the line somewhere as well there. And this is information. So let's make this bigger and click on this. And if we look at the response right in the middle of the screen, we can see that we have results and items and then a load of item data that is there. Now with this, what you'll find is that most of these will have some kind of payload or some way of controlling how many units come through or how many uh, items are returned each time. If I scroll to the bottom, we should somewhere have uh, metadata or something. Yeah, here we go. So you can see right in the middle here, it says start, end, and a maximum here. Um, so what we can do is we can actually mimic this request without the browser, and we can then go ahead and change this met change this request this met and then actually get more data back per request so if you think about every time we go to the next page all it's going to do is it's going to request the next load of data so this one starts at 48 ends at 72 here another one here we go and I scroll down and this one is going to be the next load so it says yeah starts at 72 ends at 96. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these requests and I'm going to go to copy as curl. Then I'm going to open up my terminal and I'm just going to paste this in. And all I'm checking here is that this actually works and it will work if I paste it properly. Okay, so now you can see that this looks a lot like the data that I'm after. And that's all I want to know. I just want to know that this is actually working as it should be, which it is. So now what we're going to come over to curl converter. We're going to convert curl commands to code. I'll make this big full screen. And all you do is you take your curl command, you paste it all in here and Python requests and you get this back. Now there's a few things that are interesting about this. Obviously we need to have these headers here. Um, I suspect some of these will be very important. We'll keep them. And here is the um, the uh, the data, which is the parameters that we're sending with the offset and everything here. And it's a post request as well. Quite often, if it's a get request, I just paste the URL into my browser because that has all the headers and the cookies necessary. And that will often return the text. But because this was a post request, I couldn't do that, which is why I used curl down here like so. So I'm going to copy all this to my clipboard. We're going to come back out of here. And we're going to go to a new file. I have created a virtual environment here and I'm going to create a new file. So we'll have uh, main.py and we're going to need to do pip install requests like so. I'm also going to do pip install uh, rich just because it makes printing to the terminal when I run this code neater so we can actually like you know see what's going on. So let's go ahead and open up our main file and paste in the code that we want. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. We'll go to the top. Now this won't format well because this is turning this into a string properly here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the end of this line and I'm going to do offset. I'll change the offset to one. So that's the first result. And just to work with the data at the moment, I'm going to tell this to 10 like so. Okay, so that should be fine. So let's go down to the bottom. So we have this response now and we can just print this out. So we can do print response dot json because this is json data that we're getting back. So we want to print out that json. So now I'm going to run this and we've got this data back here and I didn't import rich. So let's just go ahead and do that so it's easier to see. 
I'm rich. I do like this library. Cool. So now we've got this ni nice and neat uh, printing out to our terminal and we can see here's the metadata that we were talking about where I have this start and end. So I'm getting 10 results here. That's all well and good, but we need to think about getting more responses. So what I'm going to do is generally you can mess around with it in here and you can sort of up the number if you want to. You can see how far you can go. Um, I'm going to go out and go back to my terminal and I'm going to do uh, this instead. I've saved the curl command and I'm just going to do it in here and we're going to do offset. I'll show you why I'm doing it in here in just a second. Let's do one and I'll make this 1000 and I'm going to pipe this into JQ. Now this isn't a required step. This is just uh, utilizing some Linux tools that are available, which are super handy. Um, so all I'm doing here is I'm just working with JQ to pass out the JSON data as opposed to, you know, editing my Python file each time and then going through it, everything like that. I'm just going to do it here. And it's called metadata, I believe. Does that work? It does. Okay. Yeah. So all I did was just pass out the metadata response. You could do this in Python, as I said. Um, I just find it easier sometimes to do it in, in the terminal and in JQ, just so it's easier for me to like figure out what's going on and, and see it all here. So I know that a thousand seems to work. So let's go and um, we probably don't want to go much bigger than that because that is way more results than you'd ever expect to get from an API. So let's try 1500. Yeah, it doesn't work. So we'll stick with 1000 for now. So I know that 1000 works fine. So let's clear this up. And I'm going to come back to my code. And we're going to edit this properly now. And I'm going to make this 1000. And we'll, we'll save. Now what I'm going to do is instead of printing out the whole response, I'm going to print out our uh, results. And then it was a blank list and now the items like so. So let's save and hopefully this works um, by main and we should get all of these uh, thousand responses printed, thousand items printed out onto our terminal. Now this is, might take a little while because it's going to have to try and grab all that file, pass through it and then print it out, which is often, which is why I found using JQ a little bit easier. Um, Hopefully this should work. Okay, so we did get all the data back. Um, so what we want to do now is, now that we know that this is good, is I'm actually going to import in pandas. So we're going to do uh, from pandas, we're going to import PD. And this is kind of crucial to creating our data set because we're going to do a little bit of um, data manipulation here and we need to install this. So do pip3 install pandas. So now we have that installed, what I want to do is I want to actually create a data frame with our data. I'm going to reduce the size for the moment because I might need to just play around with this a little bit to get it to fit properly or what I want to show you anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go data frame is equal to pd.json uh, normalize, like so. And then we're going to print out the data frame. Now, JSON normalize is how it uh, how you import from JSON into a pandas data frame, and what it will do is it will unnest itself as best it can to give you a flat file, a flat data frame. So if you think we've got loads of nested JSON here, so I'm going to save this. We're going to clear the screen, and we're going to run this again, and we'll see what we get out the other end. And I've done this wrong. Excuse me. We need to do import pandas as pd my bad so we should see something okay now this kind of doesn't doesn't really look right so obviously my terminals cut out some of the data but you can see there is um all this product big stuff missed at the start here and we uh, it doesn't look exactly how we wanted it to so what i'm going to do is we're going to come down here and if we go actually back to actually want to look at this back to our actual product initial data under the items oh too big we have inside of it, we have this metadata bit. And that's what we're seeing in our terminal here. This is the metadata. For some reason, this is in here. So we want to go items, then into products, and then try to normalize this JSON. And to do that, we're going to have to loop through each one. So what we want to do is if we come down here, I'm going to say 
um, our results are going to be equal to, and I'm going to do list comprehension. So this is going to be item for the key of product for item in response.json and uh, results first index and items. And then we can do our df is equal to uh, pd.json normalize on the results data, the results list instead. So all we're doing is we're looping through every item and we're basically just pulling the key of product and therefore skipping this piece of data instead. So let's save, exit, I'm gonna make this a bit smaller so maybe it'll fit on the screen a bit better and let's run it now and hopefully, okay, so we can see, I'm gonna make this bigger, you can see now we have the name, the, the type, and you can just see over here, it's broken all of this out and we do have 55 columns. So that's 55 pieces of data that we've gathered. So I'm gonna open this up in uh, some kind of Excel type thing and uh, you'll see that we do in fact have a shed load of information here. I'm gonna try and shrink some of this down. Wow, there's loads here. So let's just explore some of this to start with. So it's formatted somewhat badly, but we knew that was gonna be the case. We have a type name, we have the images, uh, all of this stuff, quick facts, everything like that, rating count, rating value. Uh, I know you probably can't really see this because it's probably a bit too small and on a white background. And then these, for example, these don't get split out because we were nested a bit too deep. So we have these columns here that have the uh, extra information. But what we do have is we have the sale price and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we've actually created a large data set, well, 500s, but we could obviously do a lot more. We could do the whole 11,000 in the same way. All you gotta do is change the offset. But we've created this quite simply and easily using just a simple uh, export using pandas and the curl converter from a curl command based on a request, a post request from the browser from JavaScript. So just by doing that, we've gone ahead and grabbed all of this information without even having to pass it. From here, I would suggest if you wanted to do any kind of looking at this, carry on using pandas, get this open in a notebook, which is what notebooks are really useful for, chop out all the columns which you don't like and you don't want, and you'll be left with hopefully a really good data set. Now, this will work on any website that you find where you can make these requests. So whenever you load up a page, you can see some kind of um, something pop up here and you get this JSON response. You can do it, man, you can do it. So yeah, hopefully you have enjoyed this video and got something out of it and you can, you know, ready to go out and like give this a go yourself. Um, if you've enjoyed this, leave me a like, comment and subscribe. It really does help. Come and join the Discord too. There's over a thousand people in now, which is absolutely mind blowing to me. But uh, yeah, loads of great chat on there and really helpful people. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again soon.